king and he was a great king and he he was transfor uh, transporting an ark of the covenant which is a god box of the old testament where israelites believed that god was there and he was transporting the presence of god into the place where he lived and the bible says that he lost his dignity in the process he started to dance and some people actually believe he danced naked it's not accurate he only took his outer garment and he was left like pajama kind of you know uh, clothes and stuff he did not dance naked and stuff it would not be allowed actually at that time especially with the way you read leviticus and stuff god did not allow that stuff to happen and it was considered shame and, and so he did not dance naked so whoever tells you that stuff that's not real in the bible and so but he too did took his honor he took his kingly garments you have to understand king always walked at that time king wasn't a president he didn't just carry a bodyguards okay he was the man He's the man that you worship. He's the man that you bow to. He's the man. If he says to kill someone, you kill someone without a question. And so he walked with his kingly garments. As for the king, usually they would carry him. But King David takes his kingly garments off. And he's left with the same garments as every other person. He becomes like every other man. And the Bible says before the ark of God, he doesn't just simply become like every other man. He begins to dance. And the daughter of Saul looks through the window. And the Bible says she despised him in her heart. He looked extremely humiliating to her. Why? Because he did not seek to please people. He lost his dignity to worship divinity. He sacrificed his dignity to worship divinity. And David comes back, the Bible says, to bless his household. And, this, and look what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say David's wife. It says Saul's daughter. You know why? Because she was not acting like her husband. She was acting like her father. Who was her father? A people pleaser. Remember what he did? He, he chased David the rest of his life just because they sing a song where they cranked up one number. For David, it was bigger for Saul. For one song. Why? He was concerned for his reputation to such a big degree where he was willing to wipe. He actually wiped almost all of the priests for one simple reason. This man cared about people's opinion. He, he sacrificed his obedience to God once. Why? Because he cared what the people thought. Once he couldn't wait for Samuel. Why? Because the people left. The people, the people. This man lived his life always pleasing people. And his daughter got his DNA. And even though being with David, she never learned that it's not about the people. It's God who puts you on the throne and it's God who can sustain you in the throne. And David comes to her and he says, listen, I'm going to be even more undignified for God why because my dignity i am not going to worship my dignity i'm going to worship his divinity and i want to tell you something tonight that if you want to live victorious life you're going to have to sometimes put what people think about you and your own image on the altar and say god it's you i worship with my own undignity hallelujah <laughs> worship god serve him and love him even if sometimes will cost you your own image you're trying to worship him, not to preserve your own reputation. And I'm not saying being stupid and wild and weird like people, some people are doing that. That doesn't glorify God, and no, nor does it help you. We're talking about where there are times where God's plan looks ridiculous. And you say, you know what? I'm going to stick with God, and it will work. At the end, God's going to get the glory. And all the people who are laughing f f about you from the walls will fall head down. Don't worry about that. You're trying to please God. Amen. There was one man in the Bible, his name was Naaman and he was the uh, guy who was in charge of a Syrian army and he had a leprosy so this guy was a leper he was extremely successful he was loved by his nation but he had a sickness and he comes to the prophet of God and the prophet of God gives him a ridiculous extremely ridiculous instructions he tells him go and dunk yourself in the river again seven times number seven appears again number seven is the number of perfection in God's eyes but sometimes ridiculous in ours and when this guy hears this, he says, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And by the way, this river is not the cleanest. This river is not the nicest. I am a noble man. I am a man of dignity. I am a man of honor. This prophet is disrespecting me. Prophet doesn't care about you. He cares about your condition. And sometimes, I want to tell you something. God is going to test you by causing you to lose your dignity to get your healing. Lose your dignity to get your victory sometimes you have to lose what people think about you so you can get what God has for you sometimes you have to sacrifice and say you know what I do not really want to live please the people on the walls I want to live my life pleasing the God who lives in heaven
And if that means making those people wonder about me and saying, you know what, what is with this guy? He's living different today. What is with this person? They live, they're kind of weird. They don't do stuff that we do. You know what, I am fine. Why? Because God's plans might be ridiculous, but they're perfect in His eyes. And they work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that man almost lost his healing trying to preserve his dignity. And I want to tell you something tonight. Do not lose your victory to preserve your dignity. There's a lot of drama queens walk in school and they want to be popular and cool, but they're defeated. There's a lot of people who walk a handsome young man who will do anything for the applause of the people, but what they realize is inside they're bankrupt. I'm sorry, I'll rather be free than please the people. Choose freedom, not people's approval. Choose victory, not to please people. Because when you try to please people, you eventually, you get bound for the rest of your life to please them. And let me tell you something. When you're sick, they can't heal you. When you're empty, they can't satisfy you. When you're lost, they can't help you find a way. When you're alone, they can't be there as a shoulder to cry on. They don't care. Amen. There's only one who cares is God. And his plans sometimes are ridiculous. But they're perfect in his eyes. And they work. Amen. If you want to be victorious, love victory above people's approval. What people think is important. Victory is more important. What you think is important, but to serve God is more important. I don't ignore your opinion. I don't ignore your approval. I need your opinion. It, I need you. We need people around us. We need their approval. We need their help. We need their blessing. But please understand, never at the expense of our need for God. And like I said, we're willing to lose our dignity to worship divinity. And sometimes during worship, some of you, you can't worship God without losing your dignity. Your worship is extremely dignified. And somehow you think that this is the way that honors God. And maybe it does honor God in such a way. But if you've been through stuff I've been through, you don't care about dignity. If you've been through stuff some people have been through in here, and if you've been in places where it was only God that rescued you, you grew up in a Christian home, but you lost your religion and God found you, I'm sorry, but sometimes dignity is not worth worshiping. Sometimes it's God that's worthy of worship, not your dignity. Hallelujah.